David, thanks for waiting by patiently. Uh, what's the outlook looking like? I mean, we're counting down to the FOMC as well. Are we looking a little bit more stable than, you know, a couple of weeks back when we spoke to you? Well, it looks as if things have had quite a big turnaround in the course of the last week, and a very good afternoon to you. Thanks. Um, I think the fact that the Ebola um, threat is not quite so pungent as perhaps many people thought it would be, um, and the geopolitical temperature seems to have dropped a little bit against Russia. The quality of the third quarter earnings in the United States are marginally better. The stress tests um, have proved to be not too dramatically awful, though not particularly encouraging, <clears throat> though manufacturing output in the European zone seems to have been a little bit better. And take that as a compendium of news. It's slightly better than it was, and coupled with China coming in with GDP a few days ago at 7.3 percent on an annualized basis has given the market a little bit of confidence. But I do throw a little caution out there for the simple reason that we need to remember that since quantitative easing is likely in the United States to come to an end uh, either tomorrow or the next day, if Janet Yellen confirms that with the FOMC meetings, the final 15 billion facility will, with, will be withdrawn. Now, the S&P 500, <clears throat> the quarterly, average quarterly increase in the last uh, five years has been 4.7 percent, and the S&P is up about 180 percent, which far, far outstrips growth. And this data was given to us by Bloomberg yesterday. And, you know, we need to be slightly cautious that these markets aren't slightly getting ahead of themselves. I think one thing that will come out of the FOMC meeting uh, tomorrow is that interest rates are very, very unlikely to go up in the foreseeable future. And we also had confirmation uh, yesterday uh, from Minus Shafik, the new deputy governor of the Bank of England responsible for markets, that rates in the UK should remain on hold for some time. And there's absolutely no chance of interest rates going up in the European zone. So coupled with that, um, it looks relatively comfortable. Though, as I do say, we don't know the effect that complete withdrawal of quantitative easing will have on the equity markets in the United States. How, how would that actually play out for EMs as well, David? Because, you know, the last time around when we actually heard the word taper coming in, EMs really sold off. Now with the event, or rather QE, really coming to a close, could it be more nervousness in the next couple of days for emerging markets? Well, I think this is, this is the point. I, I think people will be listening very, very carefully to what Janet Yellen says. And if there is the slightest uh, hawkish attitude towards her comments, if she really starts to referring to the fact that the employment market is getting substantially better than it already is, I mean, we've got unemployment down to 5.9% from 8% five years ago, which is no mean achievement, even though there's still a lot of people in temporary employment. If the labour market continues to be very robust, then it will make people nervous that rates will go up. But it's the unknown that factor that could not only affect US equities, where you've got, you know, the S&P 500 P ratio at around 15.7 times earnings, which is pretty, pretty fresh and pretty useful. Um, but the effect that it will have on emerging markets, I mean, we basically, from our London perspective, selectively, we're very upbeat about emerging markets, but they are so, as you alluded to, closely aligned to what's going on in the United States and the dollar market particularly, that I think really to make any major long-term uh, prognosis until Janet Yellen has actually spoken might be foolhardy. On the commodity bit as well, yesterday, once again, David, uh, you know, oil price is taking a little bit of a knock, you know, with the technical rebound there as well. But is that, uh, you know, on one side, it's a comforting factor, but uh, at least from the emerging market point of view, but is there an underlining tone? Is there a message that the commodity crack also is showing right now? Well, I, th I think as I say, everything's geared to the dollar, commodity, oil prices. I mean, oil prices are sort of flirting with the 80 dollar threshold and 81 for NYMEX at the moment and 85 and change for Brent. And we've got the OPEC meeting on the 29th of uh, November, I think it is, or towards the end of November. And I think this is a very political meeting because Saudi Arabia had the, who are easily the largest producer from the OPEC countries, and the OPEC countries produce about 40% of the world's production, have had their taps on full blast for the first six months. So they're quite relaxed about the oil price coming down to 
$80 or so. And I think what they'll want to do in a rather sneaky way is to put pressure on Iran, Iraq and others to make them feel a little bit uncomfortable because they've got so many uh, bucks in the bank, as they say, from the first six months production. Um, you've also got the United States now almost self-sufficient. Um, and this has been an extraordinary performance. Um, and I think that this is probably the most significant move in the oil market. Uh, OPEC, let's make no bones about it, has the ability to turn the taps off at the end of November. But I think they're going to keep us guessing until then. Thank <laughs> you.